submarine. Life can be dangerous, you know what I mean. Twas my dream to be a sailor, even though there could be a major failure. Hi friends, today I'm going to talk about a song that I wrote um, about a year ago. It's called Going Deep. And it's about when I was on board a submarine called Her Majesty's Canadian Submarine Onondaga. And the submarine um, was older at the time, about 33, 32 years old. It was a diesel electric submarine. And we were just finishing doing some exercises and we were heading towards um, Cornerbrook, Newfoundland for a port visit, um, which is a normal thing what Navy uh, ships and submarines do. So on our way there, um, there was a hurricane that was chasing us up the coast and uh, it was extremely rough seas, extremely rough seas. And I was on the helm and I'm usually not, um, uh, I'm usually don't sit uh, watches on the helm. Um, I did uh, just a few times in that commission and uh, I was very bad. I'm a very bad helmsman, I'm going to admit it. Um, anyways, uh, we were at periscope depth um and uh the seas were just unbelievable i don't know how high they were but it, it was crazy and i was driving the boat and i'm trying to keep the submarine at a certain depth um and keep the angle level and um there was times when i was on you know at the depth that i was supposed to be at and then another time i was at uh, on the surface because the waves were so bad then all of a sudden uh it, it felt like the boat was going down and i was pulling four fully back on the um on the uh, one-man control on the helm to get the bow to go up like that and it ended up that the submarine was going down like that. And we didn't know why. So I asked the engineering officer who was sitting just behind me to give us some more speed. Um, and so we, I could uh, bring the submarine back to where it was supposed to be. And it just wasn't helping. So we just kept going down and down and down. Uh, we went pretty deep. We went, um, uh, I am not gonna say the, the depth because um, I don't wanna get myself in trouble, but we did go pretty deep that day. And um, to say that um, uh, they eventually found out what the issue was, and it was that the um, snort head, because we were diesel electric, was frozen up and water was coming in. And it filled an internal tank, which made us really heavy. Um, so uh, that's why we weren't able to get back up to the surface. So um, it ended up that um, after they found the problem, we were able to uh, rectify it and get back to the surface. But with me on the helm and there was a crew of 80 people, so that means that, you know, there were 79 other people on that submarine at the time. And it, uh, it was really scary for me, you know, even though I'd served in submarines for quite some time, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a very scary time for me. So I thought, oh, I should write a song about that. So that's what I did. And the song is called Going Deep, and I hope you've enjoyed it.
Well, that was a great video, Mike. Thank you for making yourself available for this interview. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Um, so can you tell our audience what first got you involved into writing and performing music? So I probably started back in when I was six or eight years old, uh, you know, when I got my first acoustic guitar and I started writing music, you know, I've always been into writing original music. It's just, there's something about that. That's the creative process of writing something from nothing. Mm -hmm. And, um, in fact, when I moved to Italy, I'm, I'm from Toronto, but I moved to Italy, uh, many times. And once one of the times that I moved when I was 14 and my best friend who lived down the street, Alex, who's was my guitarist in many bands for decades. Um, he, uh, he had never played a guitar, but I showed him the guitar and I, I taught him a few things on it. And then, uh, you know, the next year I had to move back to Toronto for a little while. And so I left the guitar with him. And when I came back a few years later to move back to again to Italy for do my high school years, I, uh, I, I'm, I saw Alex and he was playing all these great covers, you know, and Joe Satriani and all these licks. And I was like, great, great. Now show me what you've written of your own. He was like, what? Yeah. I was like, you know, your own music. What have you written of your own? Like, that's the whole reason I even left you the guitar, right? So that I could come back and then we'd be writing songs together. He was like, I have not done that. And I'm like, okay, well, let's start. And we closed ourselves in my music room and 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 all we just, and, and because he was such a good guitarist, we started spitting out songs day after day after day after day. And uh, so we knew we had something there. And, that's awesome. Um, yeah, then we started, uh, we both started listening hardcore to, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, um, and grunge was still coming out, so that's another moment. But really, Zeppelin and Floyd were our, that's all we did. We breathed this music every day. And um, and so we would spit out music that was in the same vein, but of course, it couldn't sound like them because we had to be original. I reinforced that all the time. And, you know, so... Um, so that's really when that creative part about, you know, started to answer your question. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so tell me about your band sculptures of sound. We just watched your video. Sure. So, you know, I brought in Alex cause he was definitely one of the first people I started writing with and he, and, and, and with him, we, we had a few bands and the late, the, 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 the last one before sculptures of sound was from other planes. And, um, you know, I had met with Alex, this uh, this guy, Troy Pless, in Toronto when uh, when we moved back to produce our first album with a good producer and a good music director. Um, we uh, we ended up meeting this guy, Troy Pless, and he ended up playing guitar with us in the band from other planes. And, you know, Alex and I have had our differences over the years uh, where really not the same type of people we love music and we approach it in a very similar way but let's just say a lot of things in life in that we are a little different and so we've had our differences and uh some of them ended up falling with the band stuff and so um you know we parted ways and so sculptures of sound was formed from the ashes really of from other planes that's ultimately the truth and so um, Troy and I continued and we met up with uh, a couple of other really cool musicians um, and they ended up being um, a, a temporary fill for what we were missing, right? You know, as a backing, as a, for uh, bass and drums. And so uh, we worked with them and that's where Sculpture the Sound was born. At the same time, Sculpture the Sound was born, if you look at the um you know it in the anagram there is is sos right and, and uh not too long after i started sculptures of sounds uh i stopped drinking and i stopped drinking um and because it it, it had just gotten out of hand and then i went to a um i went to a rehab for 45 days and in this rehab i met a great counselor and this counselor 
pointed out to me, he loved music and he loved my music. You know, he was, he couldn't believe that I was there and like, and he was listening to all of it daily. Also to understand who I was, smart man. And so he, uh, he figured it out. He's like, if you, have you looked at the, every one of your songs, uh, it's either a protest, which is fine, or it's really a kind of a, a silent cry for help. Mm -hmm. You know, even in the anagram, the name I just chosen for the band really was SOS. Mm -hmm. So, 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 and I am kind of talking about this because I kind of have to about what I'm talking about the band because a lot of the music that's in that band and that, you know, now I'm, I'm revisiting some, some years later, I can see that some of the old songs, I might have to really either re-record them or revisit them lyrically because i feel different now mm -hmm. i'm a different person i've done a lot of work on myself over the last I, I would say eight years now that i've been in sobriety and recovery and so um you know as the author i have a, an opportunity to go and rewrite some stuff because i i i, I wasn't seeing things in the right way you know mm -hmm. So some of the, but the, some of the protest stuff actually is still bang on to me. In fact, now with years of experience, post COVID, a lot of stuff has happened and I'm actually fueled to write more. Um, in fact, well, that's why, you know, in this video, live another day, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, uh, uh, I finally was able, I'm a much better editor now. So I was able to grab some images, put them uh, and put these images on a song that, you know, again, I, I eight years old it's 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 it but the the message is still the same mm -hmm. because we still in fact it, maybe it's even more relevant now we have so many problems between us interfacing with the government and politicians and with these big companies that don't give a crap about us we're numbers to them in fact we're numbers on a blockchain now uh but at the at the at the bottom of uh, uh you know shareholder profit is number 1 it's never been more number 1 never been more put in our face how much supermarket chains are are grossly overcharging us and all these things you know we're seeing that we are as the album title of sculpture the sounds it's called under the heel is because you know we, as musicians we have a right to speak out for the people right mm -hmm. we we do you know we are photographers of the world if if nothing else of being able to take a, a picture a representation of what's going on in this moment of our lifetime and, and, you know, and having a voice, you know, giving others a, a voice when they don't have one, right? You know, we're musicians. We're always trying to put ourselves out there to get more and more people. We're almost like politicians, getting more and more <laughs> people to follow us, to like us, right? So we have to carry some form. And this is my view, eh, by the way. It's not like I, I don't judge anybody else who doesn't do this. But I feel that I have to carry a torch of uh, and, and or again be a photographer of the world and show a glimpse as an artist of the world we're living in mm -hmm. and so that's my take on it you know <clears throat> that's great and congratulations on your song live no another day being number one in australia on valley fm uh can tell can you tell me what inspired you to write this song so live another day is um it started, okay, when we had the G20 in Toronto, mm -hmm. which turned out to be quite a violent, a violent turn of events, you know. And I heard, um, I didn't even go down, you know. I was, I, uh, but I had friends who, were, who had gone down and I had friends who didn't even attend like me, but um, they, because people were living in their house that did attend, they all got uh, the police beat down their doors, right? The 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 no knocks broke broke down their doors in the middle of the night and dragged these people out naked out of their beds and put them into cages. Okay, oh into cages, into cages. Okay, so uh, when I hear I, I'm against injustices of any kind, whether it's from the part of the the the, the government or from the part of the people, you know, like you just you, there's there's the right way to do things and the wrong way, and I'm for the right way. And so um, that infuriated me. And you know, when I get that kind of mad, I have to start writing about it. So I started writing, and in of course, I, I like to write in metaphors. So 
you know, some people who listen to the song can have different takeaways from it. But I mean, the, t- the, the what inspired it, as you asked, is um, some of the violence on the part of the police, which to me smells like, uh, you know, the people who or were at the G20, you know, have no have lost that interface with the people or mm-hmm. else they would be just speaking to the people, you know, and being very open about it. Not coming to our town and going behind closed doors and talking, having your discussions that that really ha- are not for the people. Let's be no. honest, right? They're yeah. for the bankers and the banking and the money making and all that shit. So, so you know, I'm more of a spiritual person. I'm more for the brotherhood of man. Mm-hmm. And so, 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 so this protest and and the way it unfolded, right? very um dystopian very you know uh they they exerted power they wanted to show that you know there was going to be order and anyways they didn't let us they didn't let the people protest properly and uh of course there were black blocks and stuff like that that made it worse and you know you, you, you can spin this any way you want but for me as a writer of this song it brought up you know, like I say in the in the song, you know, men with oil in the veins, you know, because it makes me want to cry because it's like it's, it's abhorrent in the world that we live in where the people who have all this money, and there's only a few of them, there's only 10,000 people, 10, you know, billionaires in the world. And because of them, everyone else has to suffer. Mm-hmm. So again, another injustice, right? And so I speak to that in 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 the song, definitely. That's what inspired it. And I think that's you know, living another day is for, I would like for us as a brotherhood of man to live another day and not, you know, the future looks pretty glum if you look at it from certain aspects. And if you look at it from the protesters point of view of how they got treated, I would say that, you know, it looks pretty dystopian. It looks pretty dark. And so the chorus is actually wants to be more epic and wants us to find a peaceful way to, like Gandhi did, you know, a nonviolent way to protest this dystopian future that is being fed to us by the bankers and men with oil in the veins. Uh-huh. That's awesome. And you, you really brought, brought back images of uh, the G20 in Toronto and uh, uh, when you were talking about it. And then I was able to relate to the video where you saw there was a lot of protest and everything So, you know, I understood the song anyways, but you just brought it to a different light with that explanation. So um, I think um, people that view this and view the video will uh, will really get a lot out of it. Do you feel that your songs are about activism? Uh, Well, I mean. Some of the some of them tend to be a spiritual Mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 then. And if I'm, if it was in a moment in my life where I wasn't feeling that I was being particularly in touch with my own spirituality, like for example, when, when some drinking got too out of hand or something like that, and and, and so I saw things through a distorted lens. Mm-hmm. So then they might be about uh, unrequited love. Mm-hmm. Or about um, you know more romantic sob story type of things. There's been a few of those. I also you know I had a an ex who killed herself, and mm. uh, and so there was a period where, in fact, a few of the songs on the album still relate to her because it was still some something very you know uh, something very hard. And you know I think I've always been pretty decent at. Uh, uh, letting you know letting the songs be a bit of a vomiting of my own mental health so mm-hmm. that i'm able to help myself right and then and mm-hmm. then when i ended up studying to become an addiction mental health counselor um i learned that that's an asset right to be able to do that is really mm-hmm. important and a very a, a great vehicle for music therapy mm-hmm. so so you know in a way i was already doing that before I just didn't know how to do it well enough. And then sometimes I would, I would of course, take it too far and that would lead to more drinking because, you know, it's a vicious cycle, right? Yeah. So but, are you working on anything more with the band right now? Any new uh, songs uh, you're yeah. writing or um, yeah. performing or anything like that? Yeah, Troy and I right now are writing a couple of tunes that we have on the go right now. Uh, it's, 
you know, it's it's not easy because he's in Toronto. I'm in Moncton now. Um, but uh, you know, we're finding ways to to pass the 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 projects back and forth. Mm -hmm. So um it's a pretty decent setup right now. I uh I might have to fly down soon or something like that because after a while you're like, man, I miss the band and I miss, you know, I play with some people out here, so I know that feeling again of, of yeah. playing and and i miss that so so but yeah we're still writing awesome so um this has been a, a great interview and i really appreciate it is there anything else Thank that you. maybe i should have asked you about um the band or going to number one in australia or, or oh that's right well i guess i didn't answer, answer one thing about the australian thing you know yeah that we we ended up hiring a, a really good tracker and this guy uh, has been fundamental to at least get it out there. So I suggest that everybody take a, a look, a good look at, at the uh, FM trackers that are available in your area that you can actually go speak to. You know, they're, um, they can be worth their weight in gold. Well, that's great. And I'm definitely going to look into that myself. So, um, if you're interested in finding more about uh, Sculptures of Sound, um, I'm going to put their link right across here so you'll be able to see it. And uh, thank you again, Mike. And um, uh, best of luck with your career with your band. And I uh, hope you. to talk to you again soon. All right, buddy. Hey, okay, take soon. care. Okay, bye.